Who are we telling a story to? An audience. What is the most important thing that the audience does? Listen to us. Two basic questions that you need to be able to answer for yourself. And this is gonna help put you as the actor on the right track in the right path. I'm gonna be taking you all back to school in this video talking about the five basics of acting. With anything, we have to have a foundation for ourselves. No matter what it is, you wanna build a tree house, you can have all these cool things in the tree house, but if there's no roots in that tree, if there's no foundation, what's gonna happen? You could have anything you want in this magic tree house, but no matter what you put in it, it's not gonna stop it from toppling over if it doesn't have roots. Roots, for us, are foundations. For your acting, you have to have these foundational points. You have to have fundamental basics, a foundation to do anything at all. So in this video, I'm gonna be giving you guys just five things to help build up your foundations for yourself. If just one of these points out of these five help you, then that's success. That means your acting is gonna be that much better because something has helped your foundational values grow. So one of the first things I wanna talk about with all of you is going to be emotions. As actors, that's one of the things that we always think about. We're like, okay, what is the emotional connection I'm gonna have with this character? What emotion does this character have to have? Now, the one thing that I want you all to realize with emotions is that you are all thinking about it wrong. Nobody is thinking about emotions right. And I'm gonna explain why. People, when they think about emotions, are always going to the huge, big, and explosive emotions. Now, is that true and is that honest? In some cases it is. Are there times in our life when we're big and explosive? Yes, have you been big and explosive in your life? Maybe you have, maybe not yet, maybe at some point you will be, but typically everybody has some big and explosive moment in their life. We all have different varying emotions depending on how old you are, depending on the lifestyle that you've had. We have various emotions. But what we always tend to think about for emotions is that they have to be big and extreme, and that is false. Yes, they can be, but you also have to see the power and the subtleties of emotion. And that's what I want you all to think about really quick. Instead of always thinking about the big and the extravagant, think about the subtleties that can be involved with having emotions. Now, I wanna go and show you really quick some examples here. I'm gonna be showing you a scene really quick where you can see how the emotions are really big and explosive. But then I wanna show you the subtleties in emotion. And it's gonna actually be a full-on monologue when we get into the subtleties. It's gonna be with Robin Williams. So first, let's start off with the big emotions. Lieutenant Kendrick ordered the code red, didn't he? Because that's what you told Lieutenant Kendrick to do. Object! And when it went bad, you cut person. these guys loose! Your Honor, you had Marcus inside the phony transfer. Your Honor, you doctored the logbook. Damn it, Captain! You coerced the doctor. Consider yourself in contempt. You. Colonel Jessup, did you order the code red? You don't have to answer that question. I'll answer the question. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! So as you can see, the emotion here, it's big. It's not small, it's not tiny, it's big. It's something that everybody would notice if they're in the room. Now what I want you to see in this monologue is I want you to just see the subtleties that can also be involved with emotions. I bet you can't tell me what it smells like in the Sistine Chapel. You've never actually stood there and looked up at that beautiful ceiling. Seen that. If I ask you about women, you'd probably give me a syllabus of your personal favorites. You may have even been laid a few times. But you can't tell me what it feels like to wake up next to a woman and feel truly happy. You're a tough kid. I ask you about war, you'd probably uh, throw Shakespeare at me, right? Once more into the breach, dear friends. But you've never been near one. You've never held your best friend's head in your lap and watch him gasp his last breath, looking to you for help. I ask you about love, you'd probably quote me a sonnet. But you've never looked at a woman and been totally vulnerable known someone that could level you with her eyes. Feeling like God put an angel on earth just for you. Who could rescue you from the depths of hell. And you wouldn't know what it's like to be her angel. To have that love for her be there forever. Through anything. Through cancer. 
and you wouldn't know about sleeping sitting up in a hospital room for two months holding her hand because the doctors could see in your eyes that the terms visiting hours don't apply to you. You don't know about real loss because that only occurs when you love something more than you love yourself. I doubt you've ever dared to love anybody that much. I look at you, I don't see an intelligent, confident man. I see a cocky, scared, shitless kid. But you're a genius, Will. No one denies that. No one could possibly understand the depths of you. But you presume to know everything about me because you saw a painting of mine. You ripped my fucking life apart. You're an orphan, right? Do you think I'd know the first thing about how hard your life has been, how you feel, who you are, because I read Oliver Twist? Does that encapsulate you? Personally, I don't give a shit about all that, because you know what? I can't learn anything from you. I can't read in some fucking book. Unless you want to talk about you, who you are. And I'm fascinated. I'm in. But you don't want to do that, do you, sport? You're terrified of what you might say. You move, Chief. Now, what's something that we can gain from watching this? Well, we can see, okay, subtleties and emotions, great. I don't have to always be big. I can be subtle. And what are some of the advantages of being subtle, of having some subtle emotions? Well, when we watch this scene with Robin Williams, what's one of the first things that we start to do? We start to lean in and we start to listen. Now, you have to know, as actors, what are we doing? We're telling a story. Who are we telling a story to? An audience. What is the most important thing that the audience does? Listen to us. If we're boring, if we're not connected, if we're doing everything wrong with our acting, who's going to listen to us? Nobody. At the end of the day, what people ultimately want from you is an authentic portrayal. They want to see you, you the human being, portraying a character. They don't want to have to go and see somebody trying to act. They just want to go and see you. There's too many people out there trying to act. They want to see something authentic. So the thing that can help you is, instead of thinking that your emotions have to go and be crazy and explosive, Remember that they can be subtle and they can be true and they can be honest. Now, let's talk about this next point, building characters. So as an actor or somebody trying to be an actor, you're thinking, look, I got to have emotions. I know that I see all these movies. I see people who are happy, sad, mad, angry. I see all these different emotions. But I also need to know how to build character, right? This is a word that goes around for a lot of people because people are constantly trying to search it up or people are asking me questions all the time in the YouTube comments. Hey, how do I go to build characters and things of that nature? So here's something to realize. If you're gonna go and play somebody who's Australian and you're American, should you have an Australian accent? If the character is supposed to be Australian, they grew up in Australia, their whole life is based in Australia, but you as an individual are an American person, should you go and do an American accent or should you do an Australian accent? All of you are gonna say, well, of course, I'm gonna do an Australian accent because that's right and that's what's authentic to that character. Okay, great, we agree on that. Here's another one. What if you have to go and play somebody who has a disability? If they have a character who they're trying to cast for this movie who's going to have to go and walk, say, on one leg, or who only has one arm, when you're acting, and if you're in that project, are you going to have to adjust in that way? You're going to have to try and do more things with your right arm if you don't have your left arm. Are you going to have to go and learn to walk on crutches if you don't have your left leg? Are you going to have to learn how to go and use a wheelchair, depending on the project? Yeah, you are, because that's what that particular project calls for. If you're going to have to go and play somebody who's older than you, or even younger than you, if you're 18 years old and you have to go and play somebody who's 80 years old, are you going to have to go and try and adjust your physicality, your tone of voice, the way that you speak? Yeah, because you're 18. You're not 80 years old. That's such a far, huge difference between who you are that you have to make this huge stretch and this huge change. So this is a really big thing to think about. In your acting class, they're going to give you somebody who's, say, 80 years old and maybe you're 25. That's a big transition, a big change that you have to make. You're basically going away from who you are in yourself to play this 80-year-old character. But when you're actually going in auditioning and you have an agent or a manager, never are they going to go and cast you, a 25-year-old, for a character who's 80 years old. 
they're going to cast you for what you look like. If you look like you can play 25, they're going to cast you for other 25-year-old roles. If they say, hey, you look like you can play 20, maybe that's your age range, 20 to 25. They're going to cast you within that age range. That's very relatable to you because you're very close to playing that age. And the crazy thing is, you've been developing who you are for all the years that you've been alive on this earth. So if you get a character and you're trying to work on this character, building a whole new foundation of who this person is, if I give you it today and I give you a year to work in that character, okay, great, you spent a whole year working on trying to build and develop a character. But if you're 25 years old, you've already spent the last 25 years developing who you are. The person you are today, you've spent, however old you are, that many years building yourself to who you are. This character, you spent one year. Who has more depth, more meaning, more perspective, more purpose on life? You, the person who's been here for 25 years, or if you're 18, 18, or you're 15, 15, or if you're 50, 50. You've been on this planet for this many years. Who has more depth? Who's more interesting? This character you spent one year building or the person right in front of me? And when you have auditions, by the way, you don't get a whole year to prepare for an audition. You have an audition, you have maybe a week. So no matter what you can come up with in a week is never going to beat the person that's in front of me. Never, ever is that going to happen. Because you've spent so many years already developing who you are. And what we all want to see is an authentic person. So when you're trying to build characters, what you should really be doing is finding your authentic self and bringing your authentic self into the roles. Now, how can we go and see proof of this actually happening? Well, I'm going to be showing you some clips here of interviews with Tom Hanks. And I want you to see these interviews. And then I want you to go and also watch the scenes that I'm going to go and put right after them. And I want you to see how Tom Hanks in his interviews is not that different from Tom Hanks in the roles that he's playing. Now, of course, if he's going to be doing a biopic of a particular character who's actually existed in time, yeah, he's going to be different. If you see him in Mr. Rogers, he's different. But when he gets to go and have a character that has never, ever existed before, Tom Hanks is bringing a version of himself into that character. And that's what we all have to do as human beings. If we're playing a character who's confident, then we have to bring our confident version into the character. Or if we're shy, we have to bring the shy version into the character. But we're bringing, ultimately, ourselves into the characters. So I want you to go and watch this interview with Tom Hanks, and then I'm going to be playing the scene right afterwards from him in a movie. And I want you to just compare the two and see how similar that they actually are. The inventor of True You and our founding father. And usually we feature one of our engineers or our visionaries, but today, unfortunately, it's just me. And for that, I apologize in advance. <laughs> we love you, amen! Thanks, Mom. Evidently, Wilson is a universal language <laughs> word that they don't bother dubbing into any other language. <laughs> so it's in, it's in Hindi, it's in Japanese, Chinese. Wilson! <laughs> what I'm trying to have you all do right now is I'm trying to have you just rewire how you think about acting. Instead of going and trying to build all these other characters that you're having two days, three days, four or five days to prepare for, stop doing that. You are already great. You already have a whole life experience in front of you. So what you have to do is meld your life experiences into the characters. Okay, this next point are two basic questions that you need to be able to answer for yourself. And this is gonna help put you as the actor on the right track and the right path. So here's the thing, as an actor, you have to have guide points for yourself. You have to have ways in order to get into your characters or to be able to have to be in the moment of the scene. How can you be in the moment, be with the other person? A lot of it has to do with things to play with in the scene as an actor. So here's what I mean. There's two questions, okay? You don't have to be able to answer both of them, but you have to be able to at least answer one of them whenever you're working on a scene and you're having your character in the scene, in the movie, whatever's happening, but you're there. You have to either be able to answer what does your character want or what does your character want the other person to feel? One of those two questions. If you answer both of them, Great, that's awesome. But ultimately, you have to at least be able to answer one of them. Because then when you go into a scene, it gives you intention, and you as the individual have something to actually go and play off of. If you don't know what your character wants, and you don't know what you want the other person to feel, when you go into the scene, you're going to be going in blind. It's like you're going into the room to find your car keys, but your eyes are closed. It's going to be really hard to find your keys because you don't actually know where you're trying to go. The same is with your acting. If you don't know what your character wants or you don't know what you want to make the other person feel, you're going into the room with your eyes closed. 
and that's going to hurt you and hinder you as an actor. Now, when you go to a ton of acting classes, a lot of them are going to tell you, hey, what does your character want? What do they want in this scene? What do they want in this moment? That's what they're going to be asking you. And everybody focuses on that. But sometimes what's really helpful is not to focus on that. It's to focus on what do you want the other person to feel? Because in a scene, ultimately, you're going to be working with another person, another human being and another individual. Sometimes knowing what you want does help. Sometimes when you go into a scene and you know, hey, you know what? What I want in this scene is I want to raise. If that's what your character want and that helps you, then that's all you have to go in in the scene. I want to raise. Great. That will work for some actors. For other actors, that won't work for them. So if you're an actor and you've been telling yourself, okay, I know in this scene what I want is to get a raise from my boss. Okay, you know it, but it hasn't been working for you. So then you go home and you sit down and you're like, dang, I'm going in for these auditions or I'm going in for this scene. I know my character wants a raise, but for some reason that's not working for me. Again, this is an example. Maybe it's something different for you, but just follow along with the example. Maybe what would help you instead of telling yourself, I want a raise, maybe for you, what would help is knowing how you actually want to make the other person feel. So instead of thinking for your character, oh, oh, yeah, what I actually want is a raise, you think, I want to make this person feel sorry for me. Because if I make them feel sorry for me, if I make them feel guilty, then they're going to give me the raise. That's my tactic. That's what I'm trying to do. That's my angle. That's my angle to achieving the want. That can be really helpful for some people. Or I want to make this person feel really good. If I make this person feel really good, oh yeah, I think they're going to give me a raise. If they're feeling good, yep, I'm getting the raise for sure. That's something for me as the actor to go and play off of. So this is what you have to realize for yourself. Acting classes and everybody else have always told you, hey, what does your character want? And you've been thinking one-minded, yeah, okay, yeah, I want a raise. But that doesn't help everybody. Sometimes maybe it does, but when you get in those traps and it doesn't help you, you need something else. That other thing that you need is, hey, what do I want this person to feel? That's the magic. That's what's really important. That is what will help you get locked into the scene. That is what helps you when you go into the scene and you're in the room, your eyes are open and they're not closed. So I want to give you some two examples here to watch. I want you to see this clip here with Leonardo DiCaprio where you're seeing what does he want. So let's go and play that first. You are an empty, empty, hollow shell of a woman. I mean, what the hell are you doing in my house if you hate me so much? Why the hell are you married to me? What the hell are you doing carrying my child? I mean, why didn't you just get rid of it when you had the chance? Because listen to me, listen to me, I got news for you. I wish to God that you had. So, as you can see from the scene, his ask is, what do you want? He's going, what do you want from me? That's what his want is. His want is in the scene, if he's the actor, he's going, okay, my want is, I want to know what this person wants from me. I want answers. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I want. It's very clear to see that in the scene. Now, I'm going to play you another scene over here with Meryl Streep. Now, watch this one. This stuff? Oh... Okay, I see. You think this has nothing to do with you. You go to your closet and you select, I don't know, that lumpy blue sweater, for instance, because you're trying to tell the world that you take yourself too seriously to care about what you put on your back. But what you don't know is that that sweater is not just blue. It's not turquoise. It's not lapis. It's actually cerulean. And you're also blithely unaware of the fact that in 2002, Oscar de la Renta did a collection of cerulean gowns. And then I think it was Yves Saint Laurent, wasn't it, who showed cerulean military jackets? I think we need a jacket here. Mm. And then cerulean quickly showed up in the collections of eight different designers. And then it uh, filtered down through the department stores and then trickled on down into some tragic casual corner where you no doubt fished it out of some clearance bin. However, that blue represents millions of dollars and countless jobs. And it's sort of comical how you think that you've made a choice that exempts you from the fashion industry when in fact you're wearing a sweater that was selected for you by the people in this room from a pile of stuff. Now in this scene, it's really easy to play through it because you can think, okay, if you're the actress in this, you can think, what do I want this person to feel? I want this person to feel stupid. I want this person to feel like they don't know what they're talking about. They don't know anything about fashion at all. 
I'm trying to make them feel a certain way. So between these two scenes, you can see that one of them is, hey, what do I want? I want to know what the answer is. The other one, I want to make you feel this way. Two completely different angles of going about the scene. But if you can keep these two points for yourself, when you go in and you have that audition or you get booked for a part, you're not going to be going in blind with your eyes closed. You're going to be having them full on open, being able to look at everything, see your surroundings and put everything together for yourself. All right, our fourth point in here is going to be talking about the text. So here's the thing. Let's say, for example, let's imagine all really quick here because imagination is really important for the actors. You. Today, I'm gonna get you, put you in a movie, okay? I got you, you're in the movie now, you're on the movie set, cameras are in front of you, all the actors are around you, and I'm telling you, okay, ready, go, action. What are you gonna do? You have no idea. I don't even know what I would do. If I just took you right now, put you on set, didn't give you any lines, didn't give you any text, didn't give you anything, well, what are you gonna do in that moment? You're gonna stand there and go, uh, What's my line? What do I say? Who am I in this movie? Are you just the guy delivering pizza? Are you a main character? Are you a supporting character? Who are you? What are you doing in this movie? That's what's really important with the text. The text for us, the actors, is a treasure map. The text tells us where to go. The text is telling you, hey, when you're in this movie, if you're the hero, how you go and interact with other people is completely different than if you're the villain. How you look at life is completely different. The text helps guide you within this project. It helps get you to the X on the map. So there's three things that I want you all to pay attention to when it comes to having your text. This is all going to help you a lot. There's more things, and we've talked about a lot of different things within our 10-hour acting masterclass, the 2.0 version. There's also other things even on this channel that we've talked about before. If you want the full in-depth version, the masterclass is the way to go, but just follow these three points here that I'm going to be giving you, and this will just help you a lot. So point number one is to write what everyone says about your character. So if you have a script and you're playing character, let's call him Jake. You're playing character Jake. Okay, well, in this project, what does all the other characters in it say about you? How do people talk about you? Do they all say, hey, Jake is great. Jake is nice. Jake buys presents for everybody. Or do they say that Jake is a villain? He kicks puppy dogs. He's not nice. He's rude. He's mean. What do people say about your characters? That gives us, the audience, an in-depth view of who you are, and it helps you distinguish who your character actually is. So one of the big questions to just simply ask is, what do other people say about me? The second thing to pay attention to when it comes to the text is to now ask yourself the question, what are all of the facts that I know? What is everything I know? Does this character have an age range? Do I know how old this guy is? Or this girl, how old are they? Do I know what their job is? Do I know how they feel about their job? Or is that something that I have to go and kind of find out for myself? Because as you start to build facts for yourself, when you start to look at all the facts within a project, you start to understand how your character might be thinking in that particular moment. So let's say, for example, you have a scene that you get. And let's say it's just an audition scene, so you don't have the full script. But in this scene, you have to go and buy a hot dog for your grandma because she's hungry. So you go to the hot dog stand and you're standing there and you're waiting in line, let's say, for... For 20 minutes. That's a fact. Okay, so now your character's been waiting for 20 minutes. It's a fact to know. Does it affect you? Who knows? We'll find out. You get to that register, you ask for your hot dog, you pull out your wallet, boom, you got nothing inside. That's another fact. Wallet empty. Another fact, you don't get the hot dog that you were supposed to go and get for your grandma. That's a fact. Now, does your grandma love hot dogs? Does she hate hot dogs? Is she a hot dog fanatic? We have no idea. None of that has been said at all throughout this text. We can only go with the facts. But from the facts that we get, then we start to build ideas of the possibilities that we don't know. And that's what gives us depth into a scene. And that will help us define how we interact in that scene and what we ultimately do. And then we think, okay, if I was in that moment, what would I do? If I'm waiting in line for 20 minutes and my grandma wants a hot dog, and my grandma lives, say, two blocks away, and I have to go and buy this hot dog, I open my wallet, I got not enough money to even get one hot dog. How am I going to feel? I know for me exactly how I would feel and what I would do in that moment. You have to, for yourself, know how would you feel? What would you do in that moment? How would you behave? And whatever you would actually do is what you have to go and try and bring into the scene, but you can only use the lines of text that's given to you. But instead of saying your words, you have to look at the text and use the words on the page. The third point is to find within the text what is either the most important line or the most important word that you're going to be getting to within the scene or within the entire movie. Is the most important word or the most important line that you're going to have in the scene be, I love you. 
Maybe you've never said I love you before and you find the girl of your dreams and in the scene you're going to say I love you. If that's the line that you're leading up to, if that's going to be your big line, if that's what this whole entire scene is about, is just that simple one line, then you have to make sure when you're going through that scene and you're navigating through it, you know what the most important thing is. The most important moment is not when you come in and say, hey, hi, how are you doing? The most important line is when you say the line, I love you. Okay, the last point that I want to talk about is this. Keep everything simple. Please, please, please keep it all simple. In this video, how many points did I mention to you? Did I mention 25, 30, 50, 100 different points? No. If you go to drama school, you're gonna learn a thousand different things. If you go to acting classes, you're gonna learn a lot of different things. What you have to do for yourself is keep your life ultimately simple. If you go to drama school and you learn a thousand different things, you're probably only gonna learn and use actually a handful of the information that you actually get. You're not gonna use a thousand different things. A fighter can go and learn all these different punches, all these different wrestling moves, all these different types of moves for fighting. They can learn them all because there's a lot of different fighting styles. There's a lot of different moves. How many of them are they actually gonna use? Just really a simple handful of them, but they use the handful that works for them. You have to find that handful that works for yourself. Ultimately, these foundational things are really important and they help you a lot. Some people, all they need is the foundation. That's it. You work enough on your foundation, you get your foundation strong, you build a strong personality of who you are. Then when you get seen, you have to work on your acting. Boom, it's great. It happens. You just come forward because we're just trying to see you. That's all we want to see, the true and honest version of you because you spent so many years building and developing who you are because you're important. So... What I want you all basically to realize is that simplicity is key. Simple, 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 simple. Please just keep everything simple for yourself. That'll make your life easier. That'll also make your acting easier. And ironically enough, believe me, it makes your acting that much simpler and better. I've seen it before when I was in my MFA and my BFA training programs, that there'd be a lot of actors that are trying to implement every single thing that their professors are saying. They may have 10 professors that they're working with within two semesters. And they're trying to implement everything that they're learning from all of those professors into their work. You shouldn't be doing that. Not everything is going to work for you. Some things will work. Use the things that work. For the things that don't work for you, don't use them. Stay away from them. Sure, you can try them out, test them. But you don't have to test them 18 times. If it doesn't work the first, second, or third time, hey, it's probably a good idea. Throw it out. Three strikes, you're out. Keep it simple. Keep your life simple. It works so much better for you. All right, so these are the five basics of acting. You're almost trying to have to relearn how to act realistically. This is it. These are the foundational things that you really have to pay attention to and use for yourself. If you want to go and have a more in-depth knowledge for yourself on acting, keeping things simple, being able to build and move forward, our 10-hour acting masterclass, again, our 2.0 version is going to be down in the description down below. Also in the comment section, it's 10 hours of knowledge of pure acting. Also, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you don't even like it within the first 30 days, you can literally just go and get your money back. The whole point of the course is just to help you grow. That's the whole point of it. If it helps you and it works for you, like I said, use it. If it doesn't work for you, throw it out. Don't use it at all. But your goal as the actor is just to find your path. That's it. Find what works for you. So anyways, make sure you all subscribe to the channel so you stay up to date with everything. Again, if you want the masterclass, down in the description below, also in the comment section, as well as our 10 resume templates. All right, see you guys. Bye-bye.